Here are six steps to create beautiful 3D game worlds in a couple minutes using Unity. All right, so I've got a brand new Unity project opened up and I've downloaded a couple asset packs. And of course, I'll show you guys what are these asset packs throughout the video. You'll be able to download them completely for free using the Unity Asset Store, which is incredible. The very first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and right click and hit create 3D object terrain. So I'm gonna go over to the terrain settings here and I'm gonna make this terrain a lot smaller, maybe 40 along the width and length. Then I'm gonna go over to my sculpting tools and I'm gonna choose raise or lower terrain. And then with this nice textured brush here, I'm just gonna start painting in some hills and mountains. All right, fantastic. So I've got my little world here that I've sculpted. I've just added basically a few hills to it. And now let's actually add color because of course, to create a beautiful 3D world, we can't have this simple checker pattern. So I'm gonna go over to paint textures. And this is when one of our Unity Asset Store packs is gonna come into play. So you can go over to your window package manager, but it's very likely that you've not actually downloaded this asset pack from the Unity Asset Store yet. It's 25 plus free realistic textures, nature, city, home construction, and more by Game Buff. So this is an incredible free asset pack. You can simply click add to my assets, download it into your Unity project, then head over to the package manager, and then you can search for it under my assets. You can look for, for example, 25, it's gonna come up with the 25 plus free realistic textures, and then you can just click imports on that, or maybe download first and then import. So what you're gonna to want to do now is go over to edit terrain layers and create a new layer. And then you're gonna to have to choose one of the textures that you have downloaded. For example, I'm gonna go for the cracked soil right here. I'm just gonna click on that. And there we go, we've got a new layer. And you'll see that my terrain is automatically covered in this cracked soil texture here. So I'm gonna select that, and I can also add a normal map to it, which is gonna give it more depth, right? The texture is gonna look a little more three-dimensional and realistic. So again, just type cracked soil here and look for your normal map. So there we go, it's gonna usually be this tough, strange light blue color, and you'll also see the word normal right here. Fantastic, and that's gonna give it that slightly more three-dimensional look. And of course, you can increase the normal scale, and they'll become even more apparent, right? The cracks really look three-dimensional. Of course, 4.6 is way too much. I'm just gonna maybe leave it at 1.2, something like that. Looks kind of nice, it's quite subtle. You can also change how often the texture is gonna repeat itself on your terrain. And you can do so by actually increasing or decreasing the tiling settings size uh, attributes here. For example, if I increase X and Y to 10, you can see that there's just a few cracks and the texture's a lot larger on our world. Or you can make it actually repeat itself even more frequently, like one, and you'll see that it's basically just everywhere. Of course, you can add many more terrain layers to a single terrain, right? You might not only want this cracked soil texture on your world, you might want something else. You can go back to edit terrain layers, create a new layer. For example, I might choose this dry ground layer here. Click on that now to select this new layer number two. Again, I'm going to add the normal map to it. Again, it's written normal here, that light blue color. And then I can paint in by selecting this new layer, I can paint in that new dry color texture, as you can see right here, which is really cool. And again, I'll probably increase the size here to maybe about five, and I'll leave the normal scale to about one. There we go, I can add that cool texture to my world. So there's a mix of textures, which instantly makes things a little more realistic and appealing. By the way, guys, this video is sponsored by our course, Game Dev Rockets. It's the ultimate roadmap to become a pro who actually makes money from his creations. There will create dozens of different video games, starting with small projects and ending up making an epic FPS which you'll publish and sell on Steam. You'll learn all about game arts, programming, using the Unity game engine, marketing and more. You can sign up now using the link in the description. Okay, so the next step is gonna be adding a skybox to our world. Basically adding something that looks better than Unity's default skybox, which in my opinion is kind of ugly, right? So how can we change that? Well, it's actually really easy. And again, we're gonna use another asset pack to uh, facilitate this process and really just get things cracking immediately. So again, head over to your Unity asset store and type free skybox. And then you're gonna to want to search for this all sky free uh, 10 skybox pack. It's by RPG Whitelock. It's pretty incredible for free. You get 10 amazing skyboxes. So just add that to your assets, then head back to Unity, and as usual, download it from the Windows Package Manager. All right, once that's done, we're gonna to want to go over to Window, Rendering, Lighting, and just dock that up here next to the inspector. And from there, you're gonna to want to select the Environment tab and change the skybox material from the default skybox to one of the 10 that we've just downloaded. For example, let's try this epic, glorious pink. Immediately, you can see we get this incredible looking skybox 
a lot more appealing, a lot more interesting. We've got clouds, that nice pink glow on our little terrain here. It's already looking so much cooler, right? But of course, you're gonna to want to try a couple and really see which ones fit your world. As you can see, it's super quick, right? You just select one and you can immediately see those changes inside of your game scene, inside of Unity. Okay, fantastic. So I'm just gonna go ahead with the Deep Dusk Skybox and let's move on to the next step. The next step is an absolute classic and that's post-processing, guys. So again, I've gone ahead and downloaded the post-processing stack from the package manager. You can go to Windows, package manager. You're gonna to want to go over to the Unity registry uh, tab and then scroll down until you find post-processing and make sure to download that. When that's done, you're gonna to want to right click and create a new empty game object, which I'll call post-processing. I'm gonna go back to my inspector here. I'm gonna make sure to add a post-processing layer to it. Give that the post-processing layer as well has the post-processing volume component here. Make sure that is global is checked. And you'll see that we also need to add a post-processing profile inside of this empty slot in the inspector. So you're gonna to want to go over to your Unity assets panel and then go to create post-processing profile. I'm gonna drag and drop that inside of that empty slot right there. And the last thing we need to do is select our camera and give that the post-processing layer. Then just choose your post-processing layer that you've just created here. And there we go. We can start adding our post-processing effects to our 3D worlds. For example, the very first one I'll add is some vignettes. So that's really simple. It's basically just gonna add a nice soft black contour around your entire game window. So I'm going to enable intensity and just add a little bit of vignette here. And you can see that here at the edges of the screen, this one's really sharp. So we're gonna want to make sure to toggle on smoothness, make it a lot smoother, maybe decrease the intensity. There we go, something like that. Just immediately adds a nice dramatic feel and touch to your 3D world. Next, I'm going to add some depth of field. Basically, this allows us to blur out things that are further away from our camera or from our character. Toggle on focus distance and reduce that, and you'll see that if I reduce that to about 3.5, the hill in the background is slightly more blurry. If you play around with the aperture and decrease that, you'll see that also you can get a lot more blurriness, right? The smaller this value is, the shallower the depth of field. So something like that will do the trick. I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of bloom, which will make some elements glow just a little. Ambient occlusion is a must, of course. So I wanna increase the intensity. And this is basically just going to make sure that the world feels more three-dimensional, that there's more depth by darkening the shadows in the, in the cracks and crevices here. You can see, of course, the difference really clearly when I enable and disable ambient occlusion. You'll see here I've enabled it. We get these nice dark shadows, which looks really nice. I can also add some grain by increasing the intensity here. So there we go. Our world's really starting to come to life. It's really cool stuff, guys. Of course, color grading, a huge one. This way we can get our colors to really pop out. For example, I can increase saturation and suddenly the sky, deeper red and the, the sand and cracks is more orangey brown. It looks really, really cool. And of course, you can also increase the contrast so that there's a nice separation between the sky and the ground. The colors really pop out. The huge difference with and without color grading, as you can see here. Really make sure to add that color grading to your games. Finally, I might add just a little bit of chromatic aberration, which will warp ever so slightly the sides of the screens. It's gonna distort it even cooler. Just a little bit, guys, like 1.2 should do the trick. Fantastic. So that was step three. Okay, the next step, guys, is adding environment pieces to your world, because for now, as you can see, we've got a cool sky, a cool terrain, but there's little else, right? And of course, this is a desert, so it, it doesn't seem too strange, but if you're making, for example, a forest scene or lush hills that are filled with boulders and rocks and stuff, you're gonna want to add, basically, environmental pieces. That could be rocks, trees, bushes, dead logs, houses, you name it. You're gonna maybe want to add things to your worlds. So I've gone ahead and downloaded this free uh, palm tree pack. And again, you can find that on the Unity Asset Store completely for free. I just typed palm trees free and I came up on this one by Alier Eden. And I'm just gonna make sure to download that into my project. So once I've downloaded those palm trees, I'm gonna make sure to select my terrain here. And what I'm gonna do now is select this add trees button here, this paint trees button, I mean. And we're gonna to go to edit trees and add tree. So what we need to do now is go over to our palm tree pack, go over to the prefabs, choose one, for example, and just drag and drop a palm tree inside of this prefabs empty slot, and then just click on add. And this way, I can start adding trees to my world. You'll see there's a lot of interesting settings here. We'll play around with all of them. But for example, the brush size already. I just need to click now, and there we go. I've got a single palm tree that's been added to my world. You can actually even see it inside of the game window, which is absolutely stunning. Now, of course, you can increase the brush size. This means you're gonna be able to place several trees at once. 
Let's click on that and there we go, I've got a little forest of palm trees that's been added. You can hold down control to erase trees from your world if you don't want them in. I can click on mass place trees and then let's say, I don't know, 50. Click place and that's just going to randomly place about 50 trees in your game world automatically for you. You can also toggle on the randomized tree height and then you can play around with the slider and as the name applies it's just going to make sure that there's some randomization in the scale of your palm trees. As you can see right here I'm getting a lot more variety and that looks a lot nicer right? It looks a lot more interesting. One thing you might notice however with the terrain system and this adding trees is that if you zoom out your camera sometimes the trees will completely disappear from view. It's just going to make sure that your game actually performs well that the player won't experience any lag due to like basically rendering too many objects all at once. Now to counteract this, you can just select your palm tree prefab and add the LOD group component here. And then inside of the LOD 0, 1 and 2, you're just going to want to drag and drop your tree prefab. And this will make sure basically that your, your tree is practically always visible, except when you zoom out really far away. And even then you can basically just make sure that the culled 10%, you just like click, left click on that and make sure that it's like set to 0. That way your trees are always visible no matter how far away you are. Of course, this will impact performance, however. So add some trees, rocks, and whatever you like, and environment pieces basically to your 3D world, and then we'll move on to the next step. Particles. So of course you can create your very own particle effects from scratch using the Unity particle system. However, I'm going to continue in the spirit of this tutorial, which is basically maximizing the use of the incredible Unity Asset Store. This is something, again, I think you guys have to use as much as possible. Of course, it's not necessarily easy. You need to find assets that are going to work well together, that are combined and have a cohesive art style. And of course, you need to know how to use the asset packs, right? You might have all these palm trees, but if you don't actually know how to paint them on a terrain, then it's going to be very tedious and it won't look that good. Same for almost any asset pack you find. It's a great tool in itself but you need to know how to combine it with the rest of your game, with the other asset packs, and just make sure that it fits your specific video game. With that said, I'm going to go back to the Unity Asset Store and I'm going to look for free particle effects. And you'll stumble upon this really great pack by John Moreno called the Cartoon Effects Remaster Free and it's got a bunch of incredible particles, some of which we can actually use in our little 3D world here. So go ahead, download that from the package manager and then when that's done, you'll see GMO Assets go to your Cartoon Effects Remaster folder, and then go over to the Prefabs. What I'm gonna look for is the miscellaneous folder, and you'll see a bunch of particles in there, so you can test them out, of course. What I'm gonna go for, Ambient Glows Particle Effect. So I'm gonna drag and drop that into my scene, stick so I can see all these little particles. You can even see them in the scene view. Of course, it's really quite small though. I'm gonna go over to the shape, I'm just gonna make sure to increase that along the X axis until it covers up my entire world. Do the same for the Y, increase that a little bit, and the Z. Great, so we can start seeing the particles appear everywhere. Of course, there's not enough to cover this entire world, so maybe increase the rate over time. Let's try 200, maybe 500. There we go, getting some nice particles going on. And we're also gonna change the color. I think yellow would look a little nicer. There we go, it's starting to look a little magical. It's really cool. And we're also gonna change the size, make them larger. So we'll start with a minimum of 0.1 and go up to 0.5. Of course, change the color, guys, test, tweak, maybe yellow and orange. Gonna fit nicely this, this game world. And also add some movement to your scene, which is really needed, which is really important. I might also add a little bit of noise. So as you can see, guys, I'm using the base, right? I'm using this particle system that I found in a Unity Asset Store pack, but then I'm making sure to tweak it so that it actually fits my specific world. So I wanna enable the noise module. I think actually what will be a good idea is randomizing the value for each particle. So maybe 0.5 for some and then others I've got two. So some of them are got a lot of noise going on and others are a little more static. You can maybe even go over to the nature's folder in your particle effects pack and maybe add some rain falling, right? It's a rare rainfall in this in this desert. So I've dragged and dropped that. There we go. So our world's really starting to come to life quite nicely, guys. You can go back to your terrain and if you want to actually add some wetness to it, right, because there's raining, you might want the grounds to appear more wet, all you need to do is increase the smoothness value on each one of the layers or the textures that you've used to paint this terrain. So for example, as you can see here, if I bring this up to like something beyond 0.8, you'll see that some of the ground appears really nice and wet here. Of course, it's only part of it, so I need to select this one here, also increase that, and select my sand, and also increase that. And there we go, the grounds are already appearing a lot more wet, 
which really fits right with the, the fact that it's raining. Looking great, we've got our nice little particles glowing with some rain, a nice skybox, palm trees, wet, sandy grounds. All we would need is a player character. And again, this can also be added really fast. It doesn't need to be something long and complex. You can quickly get a character interacting with the world. Use this one by Vinicius Marx. Hope that's how you pronounce the name. Totally free again. You'll get a really awesome third person controller. So just make sure to download that, then open up inside of Unity, and then import that into your project. So when that's imported, you're just going to look for the folder. So in my case, it's third person plus fly. Go over to your prefabs, and we're simply going to try and drop that into the scene. Great. So we're going to switch our camera to the camera that's actually attached to the character here. So what we're going to want to make sure and do is, of course, add the post processing layer to that new camera and then make sure that that's set to PP right now so we get the post-processing layer and also make sure to select skybox for the clear flag setting here so we actually get our our dusk. And there you go guys, we actually get a character that's in our world and we could already move around it and it only took a few minutes. Remember that if you want to become a pro game dev who makes money from his creations, sign up to the Game Dev Rocket using the link in the description. Okay, thanks for watching the video, stay tuned, cheers!